It's surprising, but another growing threat to the environment is the Earth itself. There is a spectacular amount of methane, one of the worst heat-trapping gases, locked up in the world's frozen tundra. That is, until now. We sent Mark Phillips above the Arctic Circle for tonight's Climate Diaries. It's a long way from Paris to Svalbard, Norway, just 800 miles from the North Pole. It's not just winter up here, the Arctic night has set in. Sarah Strand, a 22-year-old from California, won't see the sun again until mid-February, and darkness isn't the only hazard. So I will take the flare gun if you want to take the rifle. Okay. This isn't just a scientific frontier, it's polar bear country. By law, Sarah and her colleague, Norbert Pirk, can't go into the wilderness without packing protection. The bears may be more desperate in summer when their sea ice hunting ground melts back more each year and where at least one bear has been driven to attack a research boat in search of lunch. But Sarah and Norbert are here in winter, braving the darkness and the cold and the bears because their instruments are measuring a worrying trend that's happening now. This is basically your baby up here, is that right? Yeah, it has, definitely has to be running if uh, we're going to get all the data. Otherwise, all this suffering is for nothing. <laughs> what the instruments are showing is that greenhouse gases that scientists used to believe were trapped forever in the frozen Arctic ground are now being released. The main thing we're looking at is the gas exchange with the ground carbon dioxide and methane. But then we're comparing that to other parameters that we're measuring here. What, like, like temperature? Stove, like yes, snow, exactly. What are the weather, basically? Yeah. Okay. The worry is that with Arctic temperatures rising more quickly than anywhere else, the gases may be escaping at an increasing rate. And the more greenhouse gases, the more global warming. There are concerns of that, yes, especially with the, with the permafrost thawing. We're trying to shine some light on this. In the dark. In the dark. <laughs> <laughs> One of the most remote spots on the planet has become the center of research into the future of it. And it's not just because of what will happen to polar bears. The scientists say what happens up here is what's going to happen to all of us. And that's what's brought another American, Hannah Miller, up here too. The 21-year-old from Vermont didn't come for the skiing. She came to study the retreat of glaciers, whose meltwater, according to NASA, has contributed to a rise in global sea levels of around three inches in the past 20 years. What the climate change debate needs, she feels, is more science. The frustration comes in when uh, climate change deniers use any of the uncertainties to say that your argument is false because you can have uncertainties and still have solid argument. A solid argument being sought in the frozen solid landscape, cutting edge science on the northern edge of the world. Mark Phillips, CBS News, Svalbard, Norway.